one of our bilge pumps wasn't working. And so I was having to go down and manually wire it up. And I was doing it every 20 minutes. Well, whenever he changes tack, water, the boat takes on more water. And I didn't go down and do it. And so after he changed tack, he walked by the cabin and he just looked down and he was like, oh, we have a problem. And I was like, crap, I didn't turn on the bilge pumps, you know? And then I ran down there and I hooked it up, but it wasn't a bilge pump issue. We actually mm -hmm. had a hole. There was a hole, okay. Mm -hmm. And where, how, where, how big a hole? Did... We don't know. We never actually you saw it. You just knew that's what it was? Yeah. From but where what, the water was coming in? Mm -hmm. But what or, we suspect is um, the seas were so rough that the attach point um, on the boat that the rudder's connected to, because like, you know, right here is the fiberglass boat and then you have an attach point here and then you have your rudder that attaches to that attach point, mm -hmm. that it probably just got beat so hard that it broke loose from that fiberglass on the boat. Mm. That's what we think happened. Okay. And, you know, we tried bailing uh, with a five gallon bucket one five gallon bucket one five gallon <laughs> bucket yeah Damn. and it was just i mean and we had the bilge pumps for working and it was just not making a dent yeah. Yeah. it was filling up more and more and more things weren't getting any better mm -hmm. and so he decided it was time for us to leave and then the d two guys didn't want to get on the dinghy yet i guess they thought it was going to take the boat a long time to sink Mm. And so they just insisted on staying. Did everybody have on life jackets? Yes, we okay. all had on life jackets. Okay. But they in insisted on staying on the boat. Well, he said, you know, I have three lives that I need to take care of. I can't <laughs> wait on you guys. <laughs> because the dinghy was, um, the waves were so big, the dinghy kept smashing against a railing on the boat, and we were afraid it was going to pop. Yeah. And so we were just tethered um, to the boat with a rope mm -hmm. and we just went out and waited for those guys you know and then they finally it was uh, about it was 15 minutes later the boat started to sink hard you know and you could tell it really shifting mm -hmm. and so they dove off and swam over to the dinghy and we had to pull them up on there I was like <laughs> what are they doing out there <laughs> so I mean, six I of you are <laughs> on this dinghy for, built for four uh -huh. <clears throat> does it have a motor on I guess a no, no, he had an electric motor on it, and he cut it off because there wouldn't have been because enough room weight? for all of us. Oh. Yeah, and there wouldn't have been wow. enough room, so he just cut it. Wow. And you said in your account uh, you started throwing stuff out of your packs because you had too much stuff. Everybody had to throw things out. Mm -hmm. Well, I, <clears throat> I started throwing things out of my pack because I was supposed to fly back to work um, that Thursday. And we were like six hours from Isla Harris. So I had went in and packed all of my stuff. So I had everything together. Uh -huh. So when the boat was sinking, I was like, cool, I have all my stuff together. <laughs> <laughs> but then once we got on that dinghy and made that dry run, I was like, there's no way. It's too heavy. Yeah. And I didn't even have that much. But when your clothes get wet. Oh, yeah. Oh, my yeah. goodness. Yeah. So I ditched pretty much everything had that feeling. Um, one of the guys was real upset. He was crying. He was probably in his 20s. And then um, the girl, she was hysterical. And I seriously thought, she's either going to die or she's going to get us killed. Yeah. <laughs> because, I mean, she was just... Were these the friends terrible. of the friend from Oklahoma? Yes. Okay. And y'all, so y'all of you didn't know each other mm -hmm. when you got there. <laughs> Not to this trip. And then we knew each other really well. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> Okay, but nobody or you didn't ever think you were going to die. Or... Mm -hmm. No, I really didn't. Um, and I think probably a lot of it had to do was uh, Michael did send out uh, the SOS signal. And he had a um, two forms of uh, like a locator. We had one of those spots. Mm -hmm. And then he also had a iridium. Iridium. It's called an iridium, I believe. And it's like a ship locator type thing. Yeah. And so anyway, he sent out messages on that and he received confirmation that, uh, yes, we, you know, we do realize you're in distress and we're sending the Mexican Navy to get you. Mm -hmm. So I just figured, well, we're not that far. I mean, how long can it take? <laughs> it's an emergency, you know? 